Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming, and on this video tutorial, I have a really fun and meaningful summer tote bag project to show you. We're going to be doing a blue ombre effect, and we're going to be using this gorgeous stencil right here that says, Even the wind and the waves obey him, Matthew 827. So it should be a really fabulous project. Um, and I think you're going to enjoy seeing how you create an ombre effect. Okay, so we're going to be using one of these little tote bags that they start their life out looking like this because they come packaged in a little pouch. Okay, so they look terrible. This does not look like a nice tote bag, but as soon as we iron it, you're going to see how fabulous it looks. Before I do that, though, I wanted to show you two other projects that I made using that same beautiful stencil, that one, and then this one right here, which is glass etching, which is super hard to see. Uh, you can kind of see the waves. Anyways, it is a gorgeous project, and one that I totally love. Okay, so first thing, like I said, you're gonna do is you're gonna iron your tote bag, and, and you'll be surprised how nice this tote bag is. Um, it really is. I have my iron set on about cotton. I'm going to take you through every single step. This is not a hard project. It's just, um, it just has a lot of steps, but they're not hard steps at all. You don't have to be artistic. And one great thing about this project is that you can take everything you learn here today and do it in any choice of colors that you want with pretty much any stencil that you want. Um, MagnoliaDIY.com has just come out with a whole bunch of tote bag projects. I'm gonna do the front and the back. That have different stencils and they're $29.99. You get a, um, a super nice tote bag like this one. You get um, two packets one is blue ink and one is black ink. And then you get whatever stencil you choose for the project, which these are reusable many, 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 many times. And you're even going to get a squidgy. So if you haven't done any stenciling, um, this is a fun way to give it a try. They have some for Mother's Day. They have um, some for graduation. So if you have a graduate that you want to make a little something for, they have um, a bunch for 4th of July and summer, and then they have a couple of faith. And the two faith that they have currently in the choices are this one, even the wind and the waves, and then this one, which is beautiful too, which says, she is strong, Proverbs 31, 25. Okay, so already my tote bag looks a million percent better. And I'm just going to show you the handles even look so much better once you just iron them. So I'm just going to get them wet. This, um, the fabric that this tote bag is made out of is super soft. I got my, I made one of these for my Bible study this year. And I got that out to show you. And it has held up beautifully. It's nice and soft. Um, I have just completely loved it. So I'll show you that in just a second. Let me just get my little, see how much better that's looking already? Let's do this one real quick. And then we'll jump right into the project. Because I know watching me iron a tote bag is not exciting. But I don't want you to get your tote bag and say, oh, this is terrible quality. Because it's not. It's super nice. It's just that it's put in this little teeny tiny little clear plastic pouch for the ride to you. And that causes lots of wrinkles. But they come right out. And you will be using your iron later to heat set your bag. So here we go. Already a million percent better, except for when I threw it on the floor. Okay. Okay, I'm 
I'm just going to unplug my iron and set it over here. And I will tell you about heat setting when we get to that step. effect and this is where we're going. I have been working before I got started. This is what I'm going to show you how to create. Isn't that pretty? This is one color of blue ink like you would get in the in the um, kit, in the tote bag kit if you decide to do that. But these bags, you can order them individually. You can order the inks individually. You can order all the stencils individually. So you can go either way. This is the bag that I've been carrying all year to and from my Bible study. And it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalm 119, verse 105. And for this one, I did the ombre effect front and back all the way around. Okay, but for the one that we're going to make, we're gonna just do a front part. Okay, so first thing I need to do, because I don't want it to bleed through from the front to the back, is I need to put some paper towels in here on one side. And then I'm, uh, I'm also gonna use uh, parchment paper. And I'll take all of this out before I stencil. So it's not going to make it lumpy or bumpy if, that, if you're worrying about that. Okay. So then on this side, have you guys discovered this stuff yet? Well, I didn't say any of my normal stuff. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining me. This is DIY Dreaming. I'm Heidi Scott. Say hello when you hop on so I know you're here with me. Wow, Joy Williams is watching from New Zealand. Well, hey, Joy. Um, feel free to sprinkle, especially if you like this project. Feel free to ask questions, all that good stuff. Okay, have you guys discovered this parchment paper from Dollar Tree yet that pops up? If not, you need to look for it because it is awesome to work with. Okay, on the back side of my bag, I'm just going to lay in some parchment paper just to make good and certain that my project doesn't bleed through the front onto the back of my bag. When I did the, the one for my Bible study that's two-sided, I just kind of did the whole darn thing. <laughs> So if you like this idea, you could use paint and, and have that ombre effect. You could use green. Um, you could do stripes. This, this ink that we're going to be working with becomes permanent once you heat set it. Um, and you can also basically make paint with it. Okay. So what I did was I grabbed a couple of blobs of my blue ink, which this is what it looks like when you get it in a jar. This is what it would look like when you get it in a little pouch. And there's plenty of ink to do a project in blue and black um, if you order the, the kit. Okay, so I just took some of my blue ink and I put a thicker, more in this one, and less in this one and then I just watered it down and um, with water plain old water it's not distilled or anything fancy and then to remind myself not to go crazy to go outside of the bounds I just took some masking tape because I don't have any more um, frog tape or any of that kind of stuff handy And even with the, 
the tape on. I did find that it bled a little bit underneath where the tape was, but it looks good. It was really more of a mental reminder for me to stop. The tote is a great size. No, it's not from Hobby Lobby. It's from MagnoliaDIY.com. And you can get it as a part of a kit, which when I'm all finished, I'll get you a link to the kits. The kits include um, a tote bag, um, a stencil, and you get to choose that. They include um, two things of ink, a black and a blue. It, it even includes a squeegee. Um, and a stencil of your choice. So, but alternatively, if you don't want to buy a kit because you have some supplies already, you can get the tote bags individually at magnolia.com and I will get links. Um, you can also get the stencils individually and you can get the ink pots individually. Um, so, yeah. So you can totally do your own thing if you would like. Okay, and I am just, I just eyeballed it, you know. I don't know what that is, what that margin would be. Half an inch around the edge. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do the ombre effect here, and then with um, with the one that I have ready to go, we'll proceed on to the next step. Okay, so hopefully everyone can see all right. Um, I'm not in North Carolina. I'm actually in Georgia. I live in the um, suburbs, the northern suburbs of Atlanta. Um, I live in a cute little town called Alpharetta. Okay, so this is the darker, and your ombre can go dark to light, or light to dark, whatever you prefer. So I'm just going to start kind of laying it on. Look at that, I almost already went out. I need these reminders. Oh my goodness. And I don't want um, my outside margins to be exactly straight. I think it looks better that way. So I'm going to do this darker for a while on the bottom. This blue is so pigmented that it really does not take very much of the ink to create this type of paint. Lots of people on. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you love this idea. Um, and you can take this idea and turn it into a pillow for your sofa or for outdoors. You can make a t-shirt. Um, you can do really a lot of different things that involve fabric. bits of ink that did not get dissolved. Let me get those. So I'm going to go just a little bit higher and then we'll start with the lighter color and we'll go all the way up to the top with the lighter color. So now I'm using this one. I don't know what the percentages were, <laughs> sorry, that I watered stuff down. Um, It just looked lighter to me, so. And there's absolutely no right or wrong. I see a good question, which as soon as I'm off, 
I will read it, your question thoroughly and see if I have a tutorial for what you're asking for over on my YouTube channel. Um, I'm finding lately that it's a little bit easier to locate videos on YouTube than on Facebook these days. And I think that's because on YouTube you can have playlists and I have a whole bunch of playlists because I have like over 900 videos over there from the last four years. All kinds of, every different kind of craft you could ever imagine. Um, so you can, if you wanted to do like some DIY flowers, you just look under the playlist for DIY flowers until you find the video that you wanted to watch. And I have everything, I am a little, um, sometimes I'm a little compulsive in labeling things. Can you believe that? So I have all my videos labeled though, so that you'll be able to find what you would like to watch. Ooh, are we gonna run out? It's looking kind of like we might. I'm gonna have to make a little more. Okay, I'm just gonna take some of this darker, just a smidge of it. I'll add some more water to it. Okay, this is, also I wanted to say, this is a, definitely a messy project. So make sure that your, your, where you're working is protected. It still looks too dark. And that your clothing is protected. Ink becomes permanent when, um, is that too, gonna be too dark? I don't think it'll be fine. Ink becomes permanent when you, ooh, it's kind of going back up again. That looks cool when you use it on fabric after you heat set it with an iron. So this stuff that we're using here is typically used just with a squeegee over the top of a stencil. I'll show you that process in just a second. But you can also dilute it to make this kind of a paint. back over to see are there any areas where I don't like the way it looks and I think it looks great okay so let me move this out of my way so I don't spill it on myself or on um my project. And then the next thing you're going to do is start blotting. This is a little paper towel intensive. You're just blotting the excess water out of it. Okay, so then the hardest thing was to let this dry. I do confess that I got my blow dryer out because it has a super heavy duty setting and I blow dried it for a little while before I took the tape off, okay? And then I heat set it and I'm gonna show you how to do that with this one that is all ready to go. My iron's not really on, and I've already done this, but you want to heat set it when it's dry before you move on to the next step. So this is that parchment paper. My iron would be set on cotton, no steam. And just for three or four minutes, you're just going to go over, 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 over. Over, 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 over. Be sure to take the parchment paper and 
and paper towels out of your bag before you heat set it. You could even turn it wrong side out if you want and heat set the back of it. But it's just three or four minutes kind of in each spot. And then basically what happens is your ink melts into the fibers of the fabric and it's permanent. This puppy can be washed and dried. Um, I could carry it to the pool. It could get wet. It's not going to smudge on anything. It's going to be totally permanent. And when I finish the next layer of it, I will heat set that one more time. So let's move this out of the way again. Okay, so this is dry, um, heat set, and ready to move to the next step. And the little, the kits that they have, they have a lot of different kits. You're gonna get two pouches. A pouch of black ink and a pouch of blue ink. The blue ink is what I used to create this. I am gonna use white ink for this project instead of black because I wanna do this one. Even the wind and the waves obey him, Matthew 8, 27. But you could use black if you prefer. You could use the ink that comes in the kit if you end up getting a kit. This is another fake one that comes with uh, the kits. And this is, this is not a kit, but this was my Bible study bag that I made last year, last summer, before my Bible study started up again in the fall. And you can see I did that ombre effect and I used white ink on this. And I want that, that look basically for my bag for summer. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one. But there's, I was just going through all my faith stencils. There's like 30 of them, you guys. 30 beautiful Bible verse or faith sentiment um, stencils available from magnoliadiy.com. I'm not gonna, um, I am not going to fuzz this stencil because I'm putting it on fabric, and you just don't need to. And I have used it a few times. I made this the other day. Isn't that pretty? I'm looking for a frame for it. And then I made this. It has, I used etching cream. It's hard to see on camera, but it is gorgeous. The, the waves especially are fabulous. Okay, so I've got my stencil on. Really good. There's nothing you need to do before you move on to this step, except for make sure that the ombre effect out of ink is sealed, is heat set. It's just heat set with an iron. So I'm gonna use white ink. And I'm going to be cautious not to use too much ink. Okay, so I put some blobs on in places where there was not holes in my stencil. And now I'm just going to pull it through the holes on my stencil. The reason why I'm not putting it on super heavy is because I don't want it to bleed all over. I want it to still look pretty crisp. And um, when you put your ink on super heavy, you can sometimes get like a, a little bit of a blurry because um, you use too much medium. So if you're thinking to yourself, this looks really fun. I could make a bag for my mom. I could make a beach bag for myself. I could make a bag to fill up with some graduation gifts for my son, daughter, cousin, you know, whatever, graduating from high school or college. Um, just uh, let me know if you would like to have a direct link so you don't have to hunt down these kits. And then when you get there, you're basically um, just going to click on the kit and there's a little pull down 
menu that will show you what the different designs are. Okay, I'm going to lift up my corner and I'm going to take a peek. And it looks great! Awesome! Okay, let me throw this over here in my little tub of water that I forgot to fill up, so I'll just pour some water on it till I can get out to the sink. And look how awesome that is. Even the wind and the waves obey him. I love it. I'm gonna definitely use this this summer. Um, we don't have any beach trips planned, but you know, you don't have to be at the beach to use something as beautiful as this. So this is what it looks like. Uh, I will do the other one when it's all dry and after I've heat set it. Now I will let this dry for about two hours and then I'll heat set it again with a hot iron for two or three minutes or three or four minutes just kind of going like this. And um, it'll be completely um, permanent. It can go in the washing machine and the dryer. You could have it at the pool or the beach and it could get splashed on and it's not going to come off on anything. Um, so anyway, I hope you liked this project idea. What did we use? Okay, we used a tote from MagnoliaDIY.com. We used not even quite a whole pouch of blue ink, which I used it out of my jar, and water, and I diluted it. Then we used a stencil and some white ink, but your, um, if you order a kit, it would come with the black, and you'll get a small squeegee, too, if you order a kit. And that's it, and then I used paper towels, I used parchment paper, I used my iron, and that, that is it. So let me know what you think. Do you have to put a paper towel inside the bag when using the ink stencil? Well, I used white, okay, so I did not. But I tell you what, if you're gonna use black, I would probably use a paper towel in between. Oh, you want to see the needle book? I'll get that for you, Jenny. No problem, give me 20, 30 minutes to dig that out. So I'm gonna go sit down now and Read everyone's comments. I just want you to know that I do that. That is like my favorite part after doing a Facebook Live to sit down and see what you guys have to say. I'll answer questions. I will get a supply list for everyone who wants one. This stencil is awesome. You can use it with chalk paste on a project like this or with etching cream on a glass project like this glass hurricane over here. You put on a t-shirt. You can do lots of different things. Okie dokie. Well, thanks for joining me doing this. Can you see that? Where am I? That's the thumb. But no, don't do that. Do this. Because Facebook likes this. That's a heart. They like this a lot more. Say something to me in the comments. Feel free to sprinkle. Terry, I'll get you a supply list. Give me just a couple of minutes. Um... I'd love it if you'd consider sprinkling this video. I have lots of good stuff coming up over the next week and into the next week. So how long do the stencils last? Connie, that's a great question. Um, I think the company says 15 to 20 times, but I have some that I have used probably around 50 times or more. And they look terrible and they're not very sticky anymore, but they still work just fine. So if you take care of them, you wash them out promptly, store them on the little sheet that they come on, and I always mark it so I know which side to put it back on, um, then your stencils will last a really long time. Okay, Diane, I'll get you the measurements in two seconds. But the one thing I do want to say about stencil care Please, don't ever use paint, chalk paint, acrylic paint, craft paint, latex paint, um, milk paint, any paint on your stencils because it will ruin them in two seconds. It dries really fast, solid, 
forever is permanent in the holes that is what create the design. And a lot of people think chalk paste is the same thing as chalk paint, and they're completely different. Chalk paste from magnoliadiy.com is safe. Chalk paint is not. So they're not the same thing. And um, so don't run to Walmart and get some Waverly paint to use on your stencils, or you'll you'll only be able to use them two or three times rather than 20 or maybe 50. Okay, let me get my um, ruler and I'll tell you the size of the tote bag. It is about 14 wide and about 16 tall. And it's really nice. Okie dokie, you guys have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day. Be looking for pictures. Um, let me know if you want a supply list. Feel free to sprinkle. Jenny said she didn't know that. I know. It is very confusing. The word chalk in chalk paste and chalk paint is, is confusing. But paint is paint is paint is paint is paint. And it's bad. It's fine to paint your surfaces with paint. I do all the time. Just don't use it on your stencils. Chalk paste is good. Chalk paint is bad. Chalk paste is good. Remember my silly gestures and maybe that'll help you remember. Okie dokie. I'll see you guys later. Have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day.